When did you last do something for the first time? A few months ago? Maybe a few years? They say time feels shorter as we age because there's less novelty in our days, less firsts. Back home, our days felt, well, mostly the same. Day after day after day. So, we decided to shake our sleeping selves and pursue something where every day would be a new adventure. That's why we're driving our 1985 Toyota Land Cruiser south on the Pan American Highway to Argentina. And that's how we found ourselves in Ecuador, which was truly a country of firsts for us. Our first time driving and hiking above 15,000 feet, our first time trying a few local delicacies, and our first time successfully surfing. Join us as we explore new landscapes and new experiences throughout this amazing country. Our first wild camp in Ecuador did not disappoint. Following the lead of our friends Matilda Nick of Next Meridian Expedition, we headed into the Andes Mountains. This is quite the interesting uh, drive to camp, huh? Oh yeah, I think we'll be all alone, huh? Yeah. It doesn't look too deep. At 12,200 feet, we drove into the remnants of an ancient volcano and set up camp on the shoreline of Laguna Mohanda, a vast and stunning example of a crater lake. And, keeping with the theme of pushing our comfort zones, Cody and I decided this was a prime spot for our first polar plunge in South America. This is the absolute most epic camp we've been at in such a long time, and to honor such an incredible place to sleep, we're gonna get in the, the lake and uh, very icy. We're kinging it and we're getting in the cold water even though we don't want to. By the way, if you don't know the YouTube channel Kinging It, you should check them out. Craig and Amy are wildly hilarious, inspirational, and also are very keen on polar plunges, typically in amazing locations. <laughs> Refreshing. Oh my God, it's frozen. Brain freeze, oh my gosh, I have brain freeze. <laughs> While wild camping in a beautiful location is always at the top of our travel to-do list, this spot also had a bucket list level hike to a 360 degree view of the Laguna and surrounding mountains. This was our first time at significant elevation in Ecuador, but we pushed ourselves to climb 1,500 feet over one and a half miles up to 13,800 feet in elevation. It's amazing. So good. So beautiful. Exactly why we came on this trip. Nice. High five. High five. <laughs> Woo! Woo! All right, round. <laughs> nose, nose is good enough. Good job, guys. The pain and discomfort we felt on the hike were absolutely worth it. If this first trek was any indication of what Ecuador had to offer, we were absolutely buzzing to see the rest of the country. The vast majority of this trip so far has been about pushing our personal comfort zones. But as we drove towards Vulcan Cotopaxi, we realized this next adventure would be more about pushing the limits of Jambo, our land cruiser. The group settled into a gorgeous camp at just under 12,000 feet, 
and we all mentally prepared ourselves for what the next day would hold for both us and our vehicles. To reach the parking area of our next hike, Jambo would have to make it up to 15,200 feet in elevation. This was a first for all of us. No one in the group, nor our vehicles, had been up to this elevation prior. With less oxygen available in the air, both Jambo and Albatross, next Meridian's defender, struggled to climb up the side of Cotopaxi. After successfully making it to the parking area, our next challenge was to hike to the refugio and reach our maximum elevation of 15,900 feet. This was a tough hike. Conditions obviously weren't ideal, and the elevation severely impacted our physical and mental motivation to keep moving forward. But the reward of reaching the top was super sweet. In the refugio, with cups of hot tea in hand, we reflected with our friends on everything that led us to this moment. All the hard decisions to leave comfort behind, all the stress of traveling on a foreign continent. Nothing worthwhile in life is easily obtained. This was a first we won't soon forget. That's why you buy a Toyota 12 HD. Staring up at 15,300 feet. First truck. Though Ecuador is home to many volcanoes, our next destination is perhaps the most unique volcano in the country. Chimborazo is the highest point on Earth technically higher than Everest when you measure from the core of the Earth because of the bulge at the planet center. And we were en route to our highest hike yet, topping out at a whopping 16,500 feet. Oh my gosh. I have... Never, ever, ever felt so out of breath walking like 200 feet in my life. Taking a quick breather, staring at the beautiful mountain. We made it! We made it! Woo! I'm dying! <laughs> but it's so good. Head spinning a bit, but it's totally worth it. This view is magical. Magical, yeah. My head feels not so great, but definitely worth it. Suffice it to say, my first time at this elevation was, um, painful. But I didn't set on this trip to be comfortable. Views from our camp that evening were some of the best we've seen, and we even shared our spot with a few new Bikuna friends. Cheers and bon appétit. To be Cheers. Again. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.
Having volcanoed out ourselves by this point, we set off in search of a few Ecuadorian delicacies. The small town of Salinas is known for its local cheese, and since we were traveling with, ahem, the French, we had to stop in and try it for ourselves. <laughs> Loving the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And a trip to South America wouldn't be complete without trying your first pet, I mean, a guinea pig, for lunch. This is one first I did not partake in, and I think I'll let that dictate how you should feel about the next few scenes. It's stuck in my mustache. <laughs> That's how good it is. It's fine. Like, it's pretty normal. Yeah. Chicken. I hate to say it, but yeah, like, tastes like chicken. Nope. It tastes exactly like chicken. Really? Like, 90% like chicken. Though we've traveled with Matilde and Nick for well over a month at this point, we almost never see each other outside of their respective couple. So, when Cody and Nick decided to run our hike in Las Cajas National Park, Matilde and I retreated to some girl time. How was it? our second lap. Wise. Good. Such a good hike. So beautiful. We just passed the boys on the run. They didn't look like they were having that much fun with the elevation, but we are. So win for Olivia and Matilde. This was the first time I spent several hours with just Matilde. And honestly, it's a hike I'll treasure for a long time. The views were stunning, but the conversation and company were even better. Our last first was hands down my favorite. Ecuador has a beautiful tropical coastline full of endless sun and surf. And when one of Nick and Matilde's followers invited us to spend a few days at the beach, we couldn't resist. One of my biggest goals on this trip was to learn how to surf. That's why we've been carrying a surfboard on our roof for over 11 months. So I was stoked when the surf conditions were ideal for a complete beginner. Nick, Cody, and Matilde were all slightly more experienced than me, so they made catching the waves look pretty easy. But surfing is not a skill that is easily obtained. After probably hundreds of wipeouts, I finally caught a few waves. It's crazy to think that less than a year ago, on a similar day, I would have been sitting at my computer sending emails. Yet, here we were in Ecuador, hiking volcanoes, surfing waves, and reminding ourselves that there's more to life than work, eat, sleep, and repeat. But only if you push yourself out into the world in search of the new and unknown. When did you last do something for the first time? <laughs> <laughs>